everyone, and welcome to Chartwise Women with Erin Swenlin and Mary Ellen McGonigal. Welcome to our Thursday, April 15th show. We are excited to be here. We want to educate, engage, and most importantly, we want to empower you to take care to take care of your own investments because you know what? You're the only one who's going to care as much about your money. There's nobody else in this world <laughs> will care more about it. So we want you to understand how to invest and really take control. Mary Ellen, it's great to have you here. What's going on yes. with you? On on my side of the state? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yep. Uh, just just watching these markets powered in new highs every day. It's it's a thing of beauty, if you will. Uh, but of course, today we're going to help uh, separate the weeds from the sh now, why do I bring that up? I don't know the expression, <laughs> but but we are going to help uh, make sense of, of what and is going on in these markets and how you can participate. How about that? I think that sounds perfect. Yeah. Uh, today, we're going to really talk about um, stocks, energized stocks, those stocks that are just really starting to look pretty good. Um, we'll talk about some of our favorite sectors, some of our favorite industry groups, and give you an idea of how we have managed to weed out, if you will, the stocks that we think are looking really good right now. So let's go ahead and get right into it with our wisdom of the week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for me, one of the things I like to do is to look for new strength. Um, by examining participation. I'll talk a little bit more about what I mean by participation, but that's really where you wanna go is to find out where those stocks are starting to improve within sectors. And you can do that by looking at this participation that I'm going to show you. How about you, Mary Ellen? Yeah, so I am quoting a statistic from, uh, as many of you may know, I worked with uh, Bill O'Neill and he, uh, bestseller book, how to make money in stocks. And one of the many uh, facts and statistics that he shares, uh, this is talking about industry group affiliation. So your stock is going to be part of an industry group. And then that industry group will be part of a sector. And that industry group affiliation, actually 37% of the stock's price movement is tied directly to the performance of the industry group that they're a part of. And then 12% is related to that sector. So overall, 49% of your stock's move is going to be impacted by the uh, area they're a part of. Excellent. I never really thought of it that way, but absolutely. So it just tells you even more so why you really want to look at how your stock is performing relative to not only the S&P, but relative to its sector and relative to its industry group, because that's going to really, you know, uh, tell you which stocks have the most strength and really have the most um, potential to be right. a good investment. Yeah. You want to make sure you're in those right groups, those correct sectors. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, start talking a little bit more about those groups and sectors. And I'm going to start uh, talking to you a little bit about sector participation charts. And this is something that we have on decisionpoint.com. You can get these charts if you are a stock charts extra member or above. I'm happy to send you this sector list. So you can just uh, email me at erin at decisionpoint.com and I can send you these charts. And we keep them updated daily, but on our website, but you can certainly have them static and then decide what you wanna do with them after you have them. Or of course you can subscribe. So what I'm talking about as far as participation are really is under the surface here. I always call it looking under the hood. And what we wanna see is how many stocks are participating in the move. So you can do that by looking at how many have their price above their 20 day EMA. You can look at how many of them have their price above their 50 day EMA. Because as you know, um, Mary Ellen, I know this one's very important to you. If a stock has moved above its 50 day EMA or is staying above it, more than likely you're gonna see some strength and uh, look for upside moves. Mm -hmm. Additionally, I've added the bullish percent index. This is basically a number 
that tells you how many of the stocks within this sector have point and figure buy signals. Now I don't use point and figure charts, but this is where that, um, that indicator has been um, derived from. And then we have what's called the silver and golden cross indexes at decisionpoint.com. And these are also an excellent measure of participation because you look to see how many of these have their 20 day EMA above their 50 day EMA. So we consider that a silver cross. And of course the golden cross, most people are familiar with. We wanna know how many stocks have their 50 day EMA above their 200 day EMA. So right now I'm looking at the energy sector. We really saw it take off yesterday. We're seeing a bit of a pullback right now, but as you can see, the rising trend is still very much intact. And you can see momentum is just starting to shift toward the upside. And you also can see that the RSI has just barely gotten positive. But this is the important uh, numbers underneath the surface. You can see the participation as of uh, yesterday really had started to pick up in the energy sector. And so I found uh, quite a few very interesting stocks within the energy sector that I've been looking at that of course I will share with you. I'm gonna look also at healthcare because this is another sector that I am favoring right now. And of course, it's a favorite today uh, with this really beautiful breakout here above overhead resistance. A Little bit of a problem with price being overbought here with that RSI above 70, but you can see how even before this big pop today, we were already starting to see a little bit more improvement here in participation. So it gave us an understanding that, okay, this, this uh, area is potentially going to continue higher. And of course our momentum is still moving upwards. So that one looks pretty good. Um, let's look at tech real quick. And as you can see, as far as participation goes with tech, we're getting a breakout right now. The RSI is positive, momentum is still shifting higher. And then you can see more and more stocks have got their 20 day EMAs above their 50. We have almost 100% of them with their 50 above their 200. And then of course you can see the prices, um, the participation here in the short term, it's pulling back just slightly, but not enough to be concerned. It keeps us out of overbought territory. So that's actually not a bad thing. And there's room for well, room for some improvement here because not all of the stocks are doing super well here. So that is some of the, the sectors and the participation underneath. Utilities, I think, has been a sleeper. It's been on a real tear, but hasn't gotten a lot of love as far as what we're seeing in uh, you know commentators and such. Even me, I have to say, haven't been talking too much about utilities, but you can see the strength here and the participation that is going on within utilities as it's breaking out right now. So those are just a few sectors and, and that is what I mean by participation. You know, I do the participation for the market overall, but I think it's important to look at that participation underneath the surface on these charts, the participation charts. But I'm gonna pass it to you now, Mary Ellen, to talk a little bit about uh, some of the strong industry groups you're seeing right now. You bet. Yeah. So uh, the sector that I'm partial to at this juncture is technology. Not only is it hitting a new high, actually a number of the sectors are hitting a new high, so that's not really its only attribute, but it is a group that led us out of the last year's bear market. Of course, we had a little bumpiness here, uh, but it's recovering very nicely from this sharp pullback that began back here at the end of February. There was a lot of concerns relating to overvaluation and potentially higher taxes, which will hit technology harder, but it is recovering very nicely. So uh, I, it's an area I tend to favor because a lot of the underlying stocks do have very high growth prospects and that growth in turn will drive demand for the stock. So it's a fast moving uh, high growth area. So technology is an area uh, that I like right now. And then uh, from there, we can of course take a look at some of the sub industry groups within. So this is how you can do that. You can, from this first page of stock charts, go ahead and click on that sector summary and then any of these sectors, if you click on the name, it will provide you with the underlying industry groups. And if you're seeking strength, that 
stock charts technical rating can be used for industry groups as well as for individual stocks. So you can see here up at the forefront are semiconductors and uh, I did have names here I was going to talk about later, but this has been a very strong area. It's a big part of Biden's infrastructure plan. He's putting 50 billion into semiconductor manufacturing research and then I believe 100 billion to 5G rollout and semiconductors are a critical component to that. And there are lots of other reasons uh, we can talk about as we move on why semiconductors are uh, strong right now and why I anticipate them to continue to be a strong area. We can just take a quick peek here at the group chart actually uh, we did have one marked up, but we can just use this one just as well. This is the Dow Jones US Semiconductor Index. You can see it did recently hit a new high in price, by and large consolidating over the last two weeks, but uh, definitely an area you're going to want to familiarize yourself with because uh, lots of great stocks uh, beneath the surface there. Absolutely. And, and it's great to see that you know the price is not really overbought by consolidation. It really kept it from being in that overbought territory. And it does look just really ready for a nice snap mm -hmm. to the upside of breakout with that uh, MACD is starting to turn up. You've just really got to like those those uh, charts right there. Yeah, it's very uh, typical. This is a group that I follow very closely as well. It'll have these runs and then consolidate and then have another leg up. Consult I mean, you have to just know that it's going to pull back, stay with it, because for the most part, uh, you inevitably in this environment, you will get that next leg up. Excellent. I, I love that chart. We'll mm -hmm. definitely get into to more of uh, the stocks that we like within these sectors and industry groups. And we'll do that when we get back from our break. I have to say it is my honor and privilege to host a show with my father. I was so excited that I was able to talk him into joining the show. And now he's just, he loves it. Uh, the insight I get from him, even offline, is wonderful. But to be able to share that with everybody else so they can see just the experience. And really, I just have been so fortunate in growing up with him and having him help me learn. And I think it's great for other people to have that opportunity to learn from him as well. And we are back with Chartwise Women. We just talked about some of the sectors that we're starting to see strength in. And Mary Ellen familiarized us with what's going on in semiconductors and the technology sector. Now it's time to dig in and start looking for those stocks that we think are going to be doing well, the ones that uh, are our favorites, if you will, within these sectors. So I picked energy and healthcare. Uh, I did look at these sector charts earlier, but just a really quick review here why I like them. Energy, as I said, has been, uh, I wrote about this, it's at an inflection point, really a pivot point. It hit the 50-day EMA and this rising trend line, and it's starting to turn back up. Little trouble here at the 20-day EMA, but again, seeing participation moving up beneath the surface. So some of the different ways you can look for your sectors, of course, we've talked about this and we'll continue to beat this drum because you just can't get anything better right here. So at this point, obviously the healthcare sector is doing well. Energy is a place that I'm uh, concentrating on quite a bit. And one of the reasons I am, actually, I'm just going to pull up uh, the USO chart. Oil right now has been in a, um, what I've been looking at, in fact, I'm going to pull up the chart that I really like here. If it's in here. All righty. What are you whining for? My dog is just whining, 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 and I don't know why. <laughs> okay. So this is what I've been watching with oil. You know, we, we had the big pullback, but we hit support here and we managed to stay on it. And then we started to form this ascending triangle. Yesterday, we got the big breakout on oil and you can see that we're still getting some move to the upside. So this was one of the areas that I really wanted to concentrate on when I was looking for my decision point diamonds yesterday. So as I was saying, one of the ways you can get to this and figure out some of those areas you like 
is to, to go simply as we talk about in here, I'm gonna pick the energy sector. It's not doing so well today, but that's great. We love seeing pullbacks, that's when you can get in. So um, some of the areas that I've been watching, you can just hover right here over these different areas. And one of the areas that's really been uh, very interesting to me are actually these that are sort of those mid-range scooters although exploration and production obviously is still doing pretty well against the others. So if we just go into, let's uh, look at in, uh, exploration and production and check out some of the scooter ranks here, it gives you an idea of some of the kind of stocks that are, are doing pretty well. Now for some of these, when you're seeing these big pullbacks, honestly, I, I think that uh, that does offer you some very interesting areas to you know look at to get in early enough so some of the ones this one has been showing up on my scans quite a bit and i did present this i think last week as a diamond but you can see really nice move it did break that 50-day ema but it popped right above it it's been consolidating above that 20-day ema i now have a pmo that has a crossover buy signal we have an OBV that has rising bottoms to confirm this. And when you look in the thumbnail, I see this flag formation that I very much like. So this was one of the ones that I've been looking at. Devon Energy also has some interesting um, uh, characteristics as well. This one we'd be getting in a little bit early because we don't actually have positive momentum picking in just yet you can see that it is consolidating here on top of that 50-day EMA. It hasn't lost that support. And that tells you that you can get in here and likely enjoy a ride to the upside. So I thought this one looked pretty interesting. This is something we were talking about earlier though, Mary Ellen, about the uh, industry groups and how they compare to the S&P. And you can see this energy um, group here in uh, oil and um, exploration and production is really not been doing well, but it's starting to kick in. It's looking pretty good. And then I have yeah. one more. I was going to say Deviant, uh, Devon was a name that I actually put on my suggested holdings list back in November. And it's been a big winner for us. Uh, and we've stayed with it. I've stayed with it. I own some and it's pulling back beautifully to its 50 day and I agree, it's very much poised to uh, for a nice another leg up. Yes, excellent. And then I'm going to show one more that uh, everybody knows I follow this quite often. Make this a little bigger for everybody. And this is natural gas. Um, this is something that I've been watching, and you know, it's I, I feel the punishment whenever I get into it. I have to say. <laughs> It doesn't always, it's like gold. It doesn't always do what it's supposed to. I mean, we had this beautiful cup and handle, totally failed. We had a reverse head and shoulders, totally failed. So I, I, I am offering this up as uh, with a little bit of, um, you know, not concern, but just a word to the wise that these don't always work out, especially when you have a 50 day that far below your 200. So we're getting that breakout. We have a double bottom now. I mentioned this one to everybody yesterday. And like I said, we're now getting that breakout. You have the positive OBV divergence going on here and that lovely double bottom. If we get the breakout, which we are, and it's breaking out above that 50-day EMA at the same time, then we should expect a move about the height of that pattern, which would take it right to about 1075. And if we do just a quick, how good would that be? So if we came here and we made it up to that 1075 area, that's about a little over an 8% move. And if we can get up here and test that overhead resistance the, at the February top, that's a lovely 15.5% move. So I think that uh, UNG is looking pretty good. And I didn't get a chance to really go into healthcare too much, but uh, if we just go really quickly, I'm, I wanna save plenty of time for you, Mary Ellen, because I know you have some <laughs> great looking stocks too. So if we go into healthcare, we manage it by the scooter. I've honestly started to see some action going on yeah. in biotech. So mm -hmm. trying to bottom. Be, yep. That would be an area to, to start looking at. You can see mm -hmm. with the biotechs, we've got that ascending triangle. We've got the breakout today. And it looks like we're going to get a bit more of an upside move. 
if it gets up here, that's about a 4% move if it tests these tops, but there are a lot of very interesting biotechs out there and uh, I will probably write about some of them in my Chart Watchers article on Saturday, but I'm gonna pass it to you, Mary Ellen. I don't want you to lose any time. Yeah, no, I'm just gonna drill down a little bit more into that concept as far as technology and how you can capitalize on the strength. I was really uh, getting into semiconductors and why the bullish case. There's also a semiconductor chip shortage that is uh, taking place right now. So a lot of dynamics that are pushing the stocks in this area higher. Uh, so let's just go ahead from here and I will share with you some of the ways that you can embrace this group. Again, looking at this stock charts, technical rating can be really quite helpful. And from here, you're gonna wanna choose according to your investment style. I tend to traffic in larger cap names. Applied material is a big holding. It's on my MEM edge list. But I will tell you at this juncture, it has had a big run. I think it's up 90% from when I put it on back here. So the stock is pulling back at this juncture. It doesn't mean that the run is over. It does mean that it does need to have some more on the way of a a pullback because it is so overbought. I would keep it on your radar for when it reverses its current period of consolidation. And then another stock that we can look at if you are not adverse to smaller or mid cap names, this is Brooks PRI Automation, BRKS. And it's really sitting up here. I do want to point out these smaller stocks will have a bit more in the way of volatility, but when they get going, it can be a nice upside. So the stock has this uh, big move. It's consolidating. It pulled right back to this 10 day simple moving average poised to break out of this little base here. The company provides semiconductor chips to the life sciences uh, area. Applied material is very involved in that 5G rollout. Uh, so hence that strength there. This is another name that I am very familiar with. It's also in the same space with applied material, but it was an early winner uh, and it is also pulling back. So you have two different dynamics taking place. Those names that were first out of the gate by and large are currently pulling back. So then from here, you can drill down a little bit further. I'm not always enticed by these lower scooters, but it will get you in front of names. This is a name that I just added. Oh, I just added it to my portfolio a little while ago. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, this is NVIDIA. They came out this week, management on this day. Uh, they did come out with quite a lot in the way of new products with semiconductors. Also very bullish on their outlook for the remainder of this year. So it's a little overbought right now. You can see the RSI up here, up above that 70 level, and then your MAC. D. So uh, you will want it to, you will want to see the stock pull back just a little before entering, but definitely will want to have that particular stock on your radar. So I think uh, we, we are going to now go to our final segment. If Indeed. We yeah. Because yeah, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> This one, when uh, you put this one in, I believe this one was yours. Yes, uh, I, I laughed so hard when I saw this headline and it just reminded me of my kids at school, you know, going and if they, they didn't want their, uh, you know, they, if they had a dessert that they didn't want so much, they would trade it for somebody else's dessert or and, and, and you can imagine. <laughs> right. Of course. Oh my gosh. Those good old days. Yeah. But this story is about a woman who was packing a very healthy lunch for her husband every day. And the reason is because he felt, uh, she felt he was spending too much on uh, going out to eat and they were saving to purchase a flat together. This is over in the UK. And uh, she did find out that he actually was selling that healthy lunch so that he could enjoy his fast food. <laughs> so in fact, she, he was asking her to pack extra lunches 
and he was selling every one of them and eating quite nicely on a regular basis. So you can imagine. Her hey, it might have it turned out to be kind of a money maker, right? <laughs> That's right. I think it was a deal breaker too, though. They, they're not uh, apparently they're not moving into that flat together. <laughs> I think that one just uh, took the cake. But we're gonna. Um, yeah, so I wanted to share a couple of restaurant stocks. I'll, I'll start with uh, Jack in the Box. This display is a little easier to read here, and it is really one of the best performers in the fast food space. And this is all about uh, the company in February. They announced their Q4 results, and it was the best year-over-year -year growth in earnings in 27 years. And it's uh, had everything to do with the pandemic. They pivoted to digital sales and also uh, premium premium products. They noticed people were going for their higher end products, so they increased that. So Jack in the Box sitting up here quite nicely poised to break out of this nice one month base. I don't know about you. This, I, this Yeah, I like it. I have to say I've, I've been watching those commercials during the hockey games for their popcorn chicken. Mm. And I just I can't wait to try it. <laughs> 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 Their commercial is working. Oh, absolutely uh, working. <laughs> yeah, so they're calling for 40% earnings growth for Jack this year. Let's take a look at another big grower that is setting up nicely. They're due to report here soon. This is Chipotle, CMG, and the company, they're calling for 119% year-over-year earnings growth this year. has a lot to do with uh, openings. They are opening, I believe, 112 new stores, and uh, you can see it had this nice base breakout that it's pulling back from nice outside momentum indicators. This has been a winner for uh, my work in the past. Uh, I'm kicking myself for not getting into it uh, again here, but they are due to report. So that kind of has me hitting the pause button on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Nice little flag though, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Yep, setting up really quite nicely. And, and to see them raising earnings estimates going into their earnings is actually uh, very, quite, very bullish. Mm. So I didn't know if you had a, a restaurant name or um, what does McDonald's look like? Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. if we're going to talk fast food. <laughs> I know. Why not? Why not go to the source? The the first they, they I believe came they came out in 1961. I want to say not that I remember it. I'm just saying historical <laughs> pre precedents because a lot of my work uh, centers around innovative companies, and at the time, it was very innovative that you could drive through or or have what was fast food that was right. all new at that time. But uh, yeah, so it's breaking out of this now flat base, which in turn has the breaking out of a much longer four to five month base. So when you do have those longer base breakouts, your advance out of that base oftentimes will be lengthy. However, we are a little bit over Bought. So a little consolidation in order here for this stock. One last name I was just going to pull up here is uh, Beyond Meat. It's not doing particularly well, but they do provide to a number of these fast food restaurants. This is that plant-based meat product that has been, had fits and starts. They're growing over in uh, Asia and elsewhere, but it does have work to do before reversing this downtrend. We're going to need to see a break back above these moving averages, but we're getting some interesting momentum uh, indicators here that it could be waking up, but still has a bit of work to do. Erin, I think are we? I running? think we're at the at the bro at the bus. We have mm -hmm. to we have to check out right now. Okay. Yes, but we're glad you joined us. Hopefully, you enjoyed some of these energized stocks. And we will be back with you next Thursday. Until then, happy trading. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.